Darren, we're here at the conference of Physics of Fine Tuning in, in Crete. It's a great place to be. Um, I, I've followed fine tuning for many decades, and in the past it's been a few physicists, but mainly philosophers, some theologians uh, interested in the topic. Um, why do we see now fine tuning become an interest for mainstream physicists of a broad variety? I think what's happened is there's been a bit of a change in asking the question, what is science? What is physics? What is physics for? And a lot of the time, people will tell you physics is for describing the universe we see around us. Mm -hmm. But a lot of our current theories seem to have um, not a single description of the universe within them. So it's not like you can write down your equations and out pops the universe in which we inhabit. There seems to be all these potential universes. So the question has evolved from, you know, can we describe the universe we have to why do we have the universe we have and why does it have the properties that it has? And this has become very mainstream because this notion of these different kinds of universes are popping out of our, our latest theories that we're trying to use to unify gravity with particle physics, etc. So it's becoming more of a mainstream question. And so uh, what's coming out are the possibility of multiple universes from various ways, through inflation theory and in cosmology to, um, uh, to a string theory with a very large number, 10 to the 500 supposedly, number of possibilities. So all of these generate new. So how then is fine tuning become a mechanism or a, a lens by which to view all these alternatives? So fine tuning is, is uh, it, it rears its head in many different ways. So you mentioned inflation, and one of the interesting things about inflation is it's very important in understanding various properties of our universe, but what we've realized is once you get inflation to start, it's very difficult to get it to stop. So the general idea now is that we have this eternally inflating universe. Inflation starts, right. inflates forever, but every so often a patch has inflation come to an end and you, you produce a universe. And the question is, what kind of properties does that universe have? And if you talk to the particle physicists and those working in M-theory, it's a whole range of different kinds of properties in terms of the fundamental constants that guide that universe. And when we look at these universes in detail, we find that the vast majority of them should be dead and sterile. There should be no complexity, no sort of potential to form life. And, and the reason is, is that the, uh, the, the constants of physics don't allow either gravity to form or, or, or gravity, or, or they blows, blows it apart too quickly, or, or contracts it, uh, it, it uh, attracts too quickly. So there's only clumps, or there's, a, or, the, or there's a dispersion, and there's no time or room for complexity. Yes, it's very very easy to wipe out complexity. In fact, it's incredibly easy. Just mess around with the constants just a little bit. You can do things like you can pr produce a universe that lasts for you know, a millionth of a second. So what kind of complexity could you imagine in a universe that lasts so short? Even if you have a universe which is long lived, then all of the things that go on in the universe it, are battles between the fundamental forces, gravity and electromagnetism, the strong and the weak forces. So if you want stable stars, then you have to have the right kind of gravity, the right kind of electromagnetism. And you find that if you just play around with these constants, then you don't get stars. So you, you don't get stars, you don't form heavy elements. How do you get complexity in a universe that might be just a soup of hydrogen? Mm. So the fine tuning lens is, is that We've got all of these potential universes, an uncountable number of potential universes. The vast, vast majority of them are dead and sterile. But somewhere in this sea of potential universes, there are pockets where the combinations of constants allow complexity to arise. So the question that we have then is, um, with regards to our universe, is, is that we see this fine tuning. We do see the fine tuning between the constants that, that allow us to be here. Therefore, is that just pointing to the fact that we sit in an island of good in a sea of which is overall bad universes. Mm -hmm. So the, the concept of fine tuning, as you said, if you make changes in some of these constants, you go in one direction or another, but they're, they're all become sterile. Yes. Uh, and and, or, and no, no complexity. Um, is, is that generally assumed? Because you know, some physicists say that the, um, the assumption of, these, of the fine tuning of a small bandwidth uh, have made some fundamental um, uh, mistakes. In terms of uh, in terms of the uh, the uh, uh, the presence of fine tuning, because if you if you just for example if you if you uh, allow multiple uh, constants to, to vary in some way, you can compensate one for the other. So if gravity gets too strong, you can make a electromagnetism stronger too. So they balance continue to balance each other out. 
that, that could be true. And, and this is p the hard part here, right? We're talking about uh, describing the entire evolution of the universe. And, and of course, a scientist, no scientist works on the entire right. evolution of everything in the universe. Right. All of us work in these little pockets. Right. We have our mathematical domains in which we play. But if we want to talk about how a star is going to operate, we can talk about the forces there. But we won't then wonder about what's going on with different aspects of physics that aren't normally associated with stars. It might be true that, yes, you can play off gravity against electromagnetism. It might be if you just mess around with gravity, you find there's a very narrow range. Right, right. And you can play the two off. But what you might find then, instead of there being just this narrow range, you might find a very thin ribbon stretching through your potential space. Mm. Now, it's, it's equally hard to hit a very thin ribbon as it is to hit a point mm. in a very large parameter space. Mm -hmm. We don't know fully about the distribution of life permitting universes and non-life permitting universes across all parameter space. But everything points to those regions where you can have complexity as being relatively small compared to the overall volume. Mm. And the overall volume, uh, again, as physicists tend to work in, you know, in logarithmic spaces, you look from you know, 10 to the minus 60 to 10 to the 60, <laughs> you can have a very, very narrow range in this immense volume. Right. So you still have fine tuning as far as we know it, uh, even playing parameters off each other. So when you say fine tuning, what, what, do you have a quantitative sense of what that means? Is it is, is within you know one percent of something, or it could be within ten orders of magnitude? It depends on the scale. It depends on the scale, and it also depends upon the problem. Um, so uh, one of the issues that has been discussed already at this meeting here in Crete is this famous question of the Hoyle resonance, this property of the carbon carbon, carbon nucleus that allows carbon to form in the universe, and. People have looked at this in detail, and if you adjust the strong force by a factor of a few percent, then that destroys the ability of the universe to effectively make um, carbon. So yeah, there's a few percent there. But when we look at another question like the, uh, the issue of the cosmological constant, the thing that's driving the acceleration of the universe, there our theoretical expectations and our measurements are out by a factor of 10 to the 120. So a factor of 10 there is fine tuning, mm -hmm. right? Compared mm -hmm. to the immense right, space. Right. So yeah, we don't go by, you know, it has to be less than 1%, right. but it's like, how big is it compared to the possible range? Right. And a lot of these things always come in as being a very narrow band. Yeah, is, is this now becoming an, an important methodology or way of thinking in physics? Because it, it, in the past, it really wasn't. Well, there, there, there definitely has been a shift over the last decade, decade or two with regards to this. It was a few mavericks at the start who thought about these ideas. But the fact that um, the overall scientific question has gone towards uh, M theory and multiverses and all this kind of stuff, then fine tuning just naturally appears in that, right? It wasn't uh, anticipated, but it seems, seems to be the solution to the problems.